Minecraft Trails and Tales update is bringing a ton of exciting new features to the game, like the sniffer, armor trims, and the new archaeology system. But there are some huge changes that you probably haven't even heard about, such as decade-old bug fixes, massive performance improvements, and a new feature that will change speedrunning forever. So grab your brushes and shovels, and let's dig into these 20 1.20 facts that you might have missed. The first thing you'll notice when launching Minecraft 1.20 is that the Minecraft Java Edition logo has completely changed. It used to be all pixelated, but now it's super high quality and looks really fresh. The same is true for the Minecraft Realms logo and the secret Mintraft logo that only appears on rare occasions. You might also notice that the game icon has changed to this low-res grass block, which is pretty nice. Oh, and before we leave the title screen, there are also a few new splashes in the game, including one that says, this sand is sus. That's right, there's officially an Among Us reference in Minecraft. We did it, gamers. This is the best timeline. Moving on to some in-game changes, the game's font has been updated, adding almost every single emoji to the game. This means you can now send cowboys, robots, and aliens in the chat, rename your sword to something no one wants to die to, or just put this creepy guy on every sign in your server. Why does he look like that? Speaking of signs, you've definitely seen these new hanging signs, which you can actually write on both sides of. But you may not have known that the old signs have been given a facelift, and you can now edit signs that have already been placed into the world without having to break them, and type on their backsides too. No need to waste your axe durability if you made a small typo anymore. Now you can just fix your mistakes with a single click. And if you wanted to prevent your friends from editing these signs, all you need to do is wax them with some honeycomb. It's a funny prank you could do to your friends using this new feature and the new emoji. Place a sign on your friend's door, edit the backside, and paste in some eyes and some hands. So when you close the door, it looks like a creepy little guy is peeking through the window. Depending on the shape of the door, you could even add a mouth. Or just use this dude again. At long last, re-dyeing wool, beds, and carpets of any color is now finally possible. You used to always need white wool in order to create colored wool, but now we're actually able to turn all of those random colored wool blocks you have into the exact color you need. This is a bedrock feature that's been around for a long time, and it's about time we saw it in Java. Now I'm finally able to get that yellow color out of my bed sheets. Some people were hoping that the new chiseled bookshelves would be able to power their enchanting tables, but unfortunately, they can't. However, a new block tag was added that allows you to easily create a data pack that makes any block provide power to an enchanting table, so we can finally make this dream into a reality. Why stop there? There are plenty of magical blocks in Minecraft, and I think all of them should be able to imbue the enchanting table with more power. On the topic of chiseled bookshelves, I'm sure many people are excited to use them as decoration in their adventure maps, but unfortunately, players can still take the books out when they're in adventure mode, which will ruin everything. However, if you just modify each slot using a debug stick, then the chiseled bookshelf will appear to be full, but won't actually have any books inside of it, so it's purely decorative and can't be interacted with. This is a bit of a subtle change, but you'll now hear two sounds if you're walking on top of a block and inside of a block at the same time. So if you walk on this crimson nylium covered in nether sprouts, you can hear the creaky floor sound and the grassy sprout sound. The coolest example of this is with snow and scaffolding, because in 1.20, you should now be able to hear a secret scaffolding entrance hidden beneath the snow, if you listen really closely. I'm sure we'll be seeing this mechanic in a puzzle map at some point soon. There are also several really old bugs that finally got fixes. These blocks will no longer block enchanting tables, nether portals won't keep warbling the screen around when you exit them, boats won't get stuck in dispensers when they're shot out, and blocks like soul sand, honey, ice, and magma blocks will still affect the player when they're sneaking on the very edge of them. All of those bugs are at least 10 years old at this point, and it's amazing to see Mojang fixing them. Because of that last one, you can now make this crazy parkour setup where you barely have any space to stand on the edge of this block, but you're still slowed down by the soul sand. Anyone who puts this in a parkour map is a savage. They also fixed a bug with slimes and magma cubes, where they would previously be unaffected by jump boost potions. Now you can give them jump boost just fine, and you can make them extra bouncy. There isn't really a practical reason to do this, but a uh, cube guy do big jump. Yeah. But one of the biggest complaints people have about modern Minecraft isn't about boats and dispensers or potions not working on slimes, it's that as the game gets bigger and bigger, it slowly becomes laggier and laggier, and players with weaker computers just can't run the game as well anymore, especially after the massive changes to terrain in the Caves and Cliffs update. Fortunately, 1.20 is also bringing some major improvements to Minecraft's lighting engine, so anyone who's noticed lag in recent years should get some extra frames in this update. When you rename an item in an anvil, there's never really
really been a way to take that name off. Even if you just rename it to its original item name, it'll still have italics like it's been renamed. But from now on, all you need to do is completely delete the name, and it'll return back to normal. It is a little weird, though, that removing an item name still costs you experience points. I think renaming things in general should just be cheaper, right? If you like Minecraft speedruns, you should definitely know about the big loot table changes in this update. From now on, loot that drops from mobs and chests is based on the world seed, meaning that every time that world seed is loaded up, the loot will always be the same. This means that you can't cheat and use a mod that increases how good your loot is, as it's now super easy for someone to just copy the world seed and check to see if the loot was real. This will also make certain speedrun categories, like getting all advancements on a set seed, way more optimized, and result in some crazy new world records. All of the mob heads will now play sound when placed at a note block, including the new piglin mob head. But what you may not have known is that although player heads don't play a sound by default, they can be given a custom sound using commands. So for example, I can give myself a daft craft head that burps. I love realism in video games. This is a really small one, but it's still interesting. You can now scroll up while viewing the game's credits, just in case you missed one of your favorite Minecraft developers, like Bok. Oh, and another thing, you can now quickly change your GUI scale with the mouse wheel. Believe it or not, I'm pretty excited about this one. This might be the best feature in the entire update, hands down. Previously, whenever you would use the kill command on a player, it would just say that they fell out of the world, which is supposed to be the death message for falling into the void. In 1.20, it just says that they were killed. Similarly, if you died to the damage you take from being outside of the world border, the game would just tell you you suffocated in a wall. But now it more accurately says that you left the confines of the world, which kind of sounds metal. There's also a brand new command called the return command, which doesn't really do anything in game, but will be super helpful for people who make data packs. Please don't make me explain it. It'll just absolutely destroy this video's engagement. You can Google it if you want to know more. It's cool though. You've definitely heard of the new music disc relic, but don't miss out on listening to the other four music tracks that have also been added in this update. Bromeliad, which plays in the jungle, the cherry grove, the forest, and the flower forest. Echo in the Wind, which also plays in cherry groves and flower forests, but also in lush caves and the badlands. Crescent Dunes, which plays in the desert and the badlands. And a familiar room, which plays in all biomes. Each of these tracks now also plays on the 1.20 title screen, and they're all composed by Aaron Sheroff, a completely new Minecraft composer. Comment below which of these facts was your favorite, and while you do that, I'll let Aaron play out the rest of this video. With all that being said, I will see you in the next one.